हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट एस क्यूएल व्यूज और डेटाबेस व्यूज वी विल अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट आर व्यूज वी विल आल्सो अंडरस्टैंड डिफरेंस बिटवीन नॉर्मल एंड मटेरियलाइज्ड व्यूज बिकॉज दिस इज अ वेरी कॉमन इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन नाउ डेज आई विल शो यू ऑन द सिक्वल कंसोल एज वेल दैट हाउ टू क्रिएट नॉर्मल व्यू हाउ टू क्रिएट मेटरलाइज व्यू एंड वॉट इज द डिफरेंस वॉट आर द डिफरेंट यूज केसेज राइट सो लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द सिक्वल let me explain you first what are views and then we will come back and see that how they are different normal and materialized view in general a view in a database is a virtual table that is based on the result set of an sql query views are used to simplify complex queries enhance security and present data in a specific format okay so this is your table you write some query on top of it and you create a view okay so let's move to sql and we'll show you i am using uh, pg admin uh, postgres sql to explain this because materialized views are not there directly in sql server which i generally use we have index views which is little bit different so i want to just get your hands on exactly on normal views versus materialized views okay so we have two tables uh, we have a orders table as you can see it has 10 rows just just remember this right we have 10 rows here 1 to 10 and there are some return orders out of these 10 there are some return orders 1 and 5 and we have the return date this is my simple two tables what i will do i will create a normal view first and explain you what it does so let's say i am creating a view i will say create view this is my normal view create view let's say vw underscore orders and you have to give as and then you have to write your query so you will say let's say select star from orders you can create a simple query or you can write a complex query so let me join two tables and get the result so i will say o in a join right returns r on o dot order id equal to r dot order id right and what i am going to do i am going to take all the columns from orders table and from returns table i will take return date okay and i will do a left join instead of inner join okay so if i just run the query i am not creating view i am just running the query and if i run the query i will get the return date for whatever orders which were returned for everything else it is null because it is a left join now what i will do i will run this create view statement so create view and i am running a query within this right that's it so it says view created right query returned successfully now what has happened behind the scene there will be a view created so if if i go in the browser and if i go to views there is one view let me refresh it and show you again so we have vw_orders and it is showing as well that what are the columns so from order id till return date so now what has happened this is just a envelope okay this is a query right on top of it we have put a envelope which means now i can directly query this view i will say select star from view underscore orders okay and that's it and i am going to run this So if you see, we are getting the same data. Essentially, what is happening? The moment I say select star from view, it is going to run this table. Okay, it is going to run this query. This view is not storing any data as such. This is just a envelope on top of it. Instead of writing this query multiple times, your query can be anything, maybe hundred lines of query or any complex query. but if you create a view you can just say select star from the view name it will run the query within this right at that moment it will run the query which means let's say you created this view today and tomorrow you are running this view if anything has changed in the data right you will see the latest data why because it is again it will go to the tables again orders table it will go to the return table and get you the latest data always because it is not storing data every time to run you run this view it is going to run the underlying query remember this okay i can show you so what i will do 
I will insert one more record. If you see insert order value and this is order ID is 11. Okay. So let me run this. Done. Now what I will do, I am not creating the view again. I will just run this query. Now you see order ID 11 is also there, right? Which means every time I query this view, this will be, this will run the underlying query and this query can be anything, a simple select star, complex aggregation, window function, whatever query you can write, you can just uh, put it in an envelope, right? We will see the use cases later, but let's understand how it is different from materialized view. So what I will do for now, I will delete this record. So I will say delete from orders where order underscore ID equal to 11. So I will just run this. Now the this is deleted. Even if I run this again, now I will have 10 only. 11 is not there because it is every time running the query, getting you the latest data from each table. Okay. Now let me create a materialized view. So I will just copy this same query okay this time i will say create materialized view so let me copy this that's it no, no nothing else there's no other change right so i'll just say create materialized view this 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 let's change the name let's call it mvw underscore orders and that's it okay so this is also done Let's run the query on this view now. So I will just take this query and run it. MVW, right? This is the new view that we have created. So if you see here, again, it is the same thing. I'm getting the return date, 10 records, everything, right? But let me do one thing now. I will insert the data again here, right? So now 11 is there. So if I run my normal view, 11 will be there, right? That we have seen already. So 11 is there. If you see, see 11 is there, right? Now let me run this materialized view. In this, if you see there are only 10 records. So the 11th record has not come, which means the materialized view is storing the data along with this. So the, when you created the materialized view at that point, whatever is the data, it will query that data and it will store the result of that query. Okay. So when you insert a new record in orders table, returns table, it will not be reflected. So it may not have the latest data every time you run it. Now you will ask then what if I want to refresh the data? So you have the command refresh materialize view and the view name. Right. So if you run this, let me run this. So it says refresh materialized view query return successfully. And if I run the materialized view again, now you see 11 is there. So I have to manually, I have to manually refresh it to get the latest data. Okay. There is one more option. When you create a materialized view, let me drop it. So I will say drop materialized view. So if you want to create again, want to make some changes, you can always drop it and create again. So I'll just drop it, right? So now we have an option here with no data, right? By default, it is with data, which means when I create this view, it will pass the data at that point only. If I say with no data, it will just create the view, but it will not store the data. So if I just do this again, you see, there is no data has not been populated. So we have to manually refresh it. So if I say refresh it, it will just refresh the data and you will have the data, right? So basically at the time of creation, there will not be any data, but you can refresh it. But by default, it is th like this with data. So at the time of creation, data will also be populated in the view, right? So this is how normal view and materialist view are different. But let's see the use cases and advantage and disadvantage of both the views. So let's go to the slide again. Okay. So now see, now it will make sense. So first thing is storage does not store data physically. So we saw that it didn't store the data. Every time you run normal view, it will query the data, whatever query you have put and get you. It says it stores data physically. So it has stores data, 
and unless and until you refresh it, you will not see the latest data. Data freshness always up to date because it is running the query can become stale requires fresh refresh. So that we saw right. The data was still when we inserted order ID 11 and we had to manually refresh it. Performance. Now performance you could have, you can guess easily. Slower for complex queries, right? Because every time it is going and running the query, so it will be definitely slow because it has to run the query, get the data and everything, right? But this is faster for read operations, right? Because data is already pre-computed. Everything is stored physically. The moment you query it, it will just give the data. It doesn't have to run any query just simple query select a star from view and it will get you the data that's why this is this is much much faster second thing is usage right so when we should use what right so normal views are used generally to simplify complex queries so as i said let's say you have a hundred lines or 50 lines of query and you want to run it again or let's say you want to give it to some business users so that they can run that query and fetch the data every day now, instead of giving the giving that complex query, you can create a view and share that view with someone or you can use that view for yourself. Tomorrow you run that view, you get the data. So for that purpose, this is good, right? But this is used for fast performance. Let's say you have some reports, right? For which you need fast data, right? You have a lot of complex query. You have some aggregated data that you want to view in some reports. So generally in analytics, in data warehousing, kind of scenarios you will always use materialized view all also what happens in a data warehouse data is updated once in a day maximum right because generally you will have batch data pipelines who which will be running once a day so let's say your data is getting updated at two o'clock in the night so maybe you can schedule a refresh for your materialized view at three o'clock and after three o'clock your data will not change so your materialized view will always have the latest data Next day again, when the new data is coming at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, you have scheduled a refresh. So your data will be refreshed again and you will get the better and fast performance. So that's why you will generally use materialized views when you are working in the data analytics environment or in a data warehouse. Okay. For refresh, as I said, no refresh is needed. Nothing. It will always query the data. It has to be manually refresh or some of the data warehouse have automatic refresh option that I will show you. Okay, data access fetches data dynamically from base tables. Same thing again. And this is retrieves pre computed data. So these are the differences. If someone is asking you in interview, you can just tell these two, three things that it doesn't store data physically, it stores data. Right now, most of the time you have to schedule this refresh, right? Because it will not happen automatically and you don't want to manually also do it every day so you can schedule it whatever scheduler you are using but in some of the databases for example in redshift i have worked you have this option alter materialized view let's say this is your view name set auto refresh so what it will do it will keep looking at the underlying table if there are some insert update or delete is happening in the underlying table this view will automatically auto refresh so it will refresh the data in your materialized view automatically it will sync with the latest data and you don't have to do it manually okay so that's why uh, for these reasons because it is fast materialized view are very very powerful and will be used a lot in our data analytics okay i hope this makes sense let me know if you have any doubt about the views and i will end this video do like the video and subscribe to the channel have a good day